Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome today to another Obsidian video. Today we're going to be having a look at a brand new feature which is called Canvas. There's been a official update to Obsidian that includes this new functionality and can I say it's rather lovely. Um, I would also like to say a huge shout out to the entire world. Merry Christmas guys if you do celebrate it. I hope you are thoroughly enjoying yourself. Everyone's gone home here, so we're just starting to relax. So I thought, let's jump in here and create a video. All right, so let's go through and have a look. What is Canvas? Well, let's jump down here and have a look at this, all right? So I've got a note here called Getting Paid Canvas. Now, Getting Paid is the name of a module in this case that I've been putting into Obsidian for me to run. Um, and what does Canvas do? Well, it lets you sort of like drag these things out and set your notes out in a visual way. So for anyone who's used to mind mapping or Visio, for example, this concept of having a flow chart where you're, you know, you're having nodes and you're having information and it's all sort of like linking to each other and you've got these joins going on, like that is what Canvas is for. And can I say it's a lovely solution. I am really quite enjoying it. So let's go through and have a look. What have I done? So I just want to I want to run you through this note. All right. So getting paid is a free adventure put out for Cyberpunk Red. Um, I'm preparing potentially to run it for my players. We want to try Cyberpunk for the first time, so we're going to have a crack. And what I've done is I've gone through and I've put my or well, put the entire module into Obsidian. Okay. So you can see here that I'm using. TTRPG stat blocks, I'm using uh, headings here for the different sort of sections uh, within the module and basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a, um, a copy of the PDF, let's be honest. Alright, so if we go through and have a look here, you know, you can see I've got lots of cool stuff going on. I've entered the whole module and what am I doing over here with the Getting Paid Canvas is I'm basically mapping out what that looks like and how it works. All right, but let's start from the beginning. How do we do this? All right, so we, we need to create a new canvas and that is simple. All you do is you come up down here to a folder and you right click and you say new canvas. Where is it? New canvas, there we go. All right, so you just click that. That will create a new canvas. From there, you can give it a name. Oh. J. All right, you can give it a name, and then from there it says drag from below or double click space plus drag to pan, control plus open doom. So how easy is this thing to use? Look, it's very easy, guys. You can right click, you can add new note, add media, add card, add web page, and create group. So let's just see just how easy this is. All right, if we drag dirty cop over, this is a note. We've just dragged it directly onto here and you can see this note actually contains a TTRPG stat block and an encounter block. Oh, that's interesting. These weren't working when I tried yesterday. So the fact that they're now working is fantastic. All right, so we can see here that we've got a TTRPG stat block and an encounter block displaying in this new sort of thing and away it goes. All right, but if we were a dirty cop leader, we can drag that out as well. And the nuts and bolts of it, right, is you can have notes sort of dragging out and you can drag from here to there and drag from there down to here. All right, that's the, that's the nuts and bolts of it, right? You're dragging out notes, you're connecting them and you, you're basically saying, well, this is what this is going to look like. Now, if we come back here and have a look, what have I actually done here? All right. I just thought like, let's make it look good, right? So I dragged an image, all right, over here. So right click add media from vault. Um, I like to type PNG just to bring up all of my images. And as you can see here, you can press an image and that lets you bring it in and then drag that around. All right, so that's easy. Um, you can also right click and go add note from vault. So we can come in here and let's say we can put the whole getting paid uh, thing in here as its own note. You can see we can click in and then we can scroll down. It's the whole note. All right, which is fine, that works quite well. Now, I'm just gonna delete that one. But what I've done here is, you'll see that I wanted to have one note for my adventure module, all right? Because getting paid isn't a big module. I don't need one note per chapter, for example, but there are certain different sections within it. So what I did is I, I came in here and I went right click and I went add card. Now cards are fantastic, right? So 
This is a card. It's effectively a new note. That's it. All right, it's a new note. Think of it like that. It's just a, its own MD file. I'm, I don't think it's actually working with MD files in the background, but it lets you type and we can come in here. What can we do? We can link. All right, so we can get put getting paid. And you notice that the things we can do in Obsidian, we can also do in these cards. All right, so if I take away the explanation mark, that should just have a link. And if I click in here and hover over, I can also see the hover over. So it's basically like a new note, right? A card is a note, effectively, is the way I like to think about it. So you can have it in there. Uh, you can click the set color, and you can change the colors of the note. All right, so that's cool. Uh, you've got zoom to selection, we'll just zoom to it, but then you've got edit as well. All right, and that's what I'm doing down here. But just to show you what I'm doing, is I'm bringing in a note, all right, and I'm just gonna put this one again so you guys can see how it works, but getting paid, all right, is one, and that would be a normal note, uh, a normal link, sorry, to that specific note. But if we do a hash, we get to actually link to the sub um, the subheading within that note. So after hash, it lists all of the different headings here. All right, so I can see heading one, getting paid. Uh, this one here is linking to mission summary. We've got before you begin. Right, so you can link to different sections here, all right? And that will bring in just that section of that note. Now, that is rather useful in a card, all right? Because I've got one note for my adventure, all right? And then what I've done is I've put the mission summary in here. And what I'm gonna do is just let's control this one over here. We're gonna open this up on a separate page, just so you can see how this operates. Give us all the screen. All right, so mission summary. All right, so I've got the mission summary there. I didn't put the game masters only before you begin. I didn't think that'd be necessary for the actual workflow. All right, so we've got mission summary. So I've basically linked a card to this section here, in here. And then what I've done is I've done the hook, the phone call, and I've created a new card for the hook, the phone call. How have I done that? Literally just by doing a link with an explanation mark, which renders that in the uh, card for you. And then having a hashtag chapter name, all right? Or ha hashtag um, title name. And that then links that there. All right, so once we've got two sections in here, we can just literally hold our mouse over any of the edges of one of these things. All right, and then from there, we can drag that out. All right. Note that we can also double click on these lines and say more info. All right, so you can do that, or you can actually click on them and you can change the color as well. All right, if you need an arrow to go back the other way, you can do it. Note that you just sort of drag over yourself and you go back. But note there's obviously an, an, a set order of priority here on what is in front, so you might need to color it again, but you can get this nice visual two way effect if you want it to make an arrow go in the direction you want, all you do is you start from one end and go to the direction you want that arrow to head and it will automatically go in that direction. So it is so easy to use guys. So as you can see here, I've literally just dragged in these uh, these cards by right clicking add card, all right? And then I've just joined them up and away we go. So literally nothing special going on here. I'm just following the flow of this adventure all right, following it through from start to finish, just mapping it out. And I guess the idea that I'm sort of heading for here is that I can just come in here and use this to actually run my, my mission, right? Like I can start with this, I can read this information, I can move from there. But I think more importantly is once we get later in the mission, all right, we get to the, the climax here with the warehouse, where we have a decision point on how the players proceed, we can actually start dragging out different cards to different sections to handle the different sort of decisions, right? And we can see that from the climax of the warehouse, that all goes into here. They all end up in the same place, so it doesn't really matter. But obviously, if you're having a more complex sort of session, you could actually map out some really cool things with here. Now, another thing I did, just to throw an idea out here, was these cards here with the TTRGB stat block in it, right? So. All I did was use a normal stat block, and I'll zoom in here so you can see it. It's just a normal stat block. All right, it's a card, so I right click card, and then within the card, I literally use my um, Alt T to trigger my templates, and I come in here and say, all right, I want a stat block. 
All right, so I have templates for all these things, right? So I can have a goblin in here, no problems, and it should come through. Actually, I'll have to go through here and render the goblin. Now, I'm not playing in D&D &D 5th edition right now, so the goblin's not working, that's all that is. We'll get rid of that. All right, so literally the things you can do inside of here are, you know, relatively easy to do. I was going to test this because this did not work. Sorry, did not work when I first tried it. Uh, insert encounter. All right. All right. Looks like they're still not working. So encounter blocks aren't perfect yet. I wonder though if we can do this one. I'm just going to do a dirty cop. Three dirty cops. Yeah, no, it looks like the uh, encounter blocks aren't working perfectly yet, so we have raised an issue for that. All right, um, all right. So I like this idea, though, right? So what I've got is I've got sort of section of the modules leading into each other, so you can follow that workflow from start to finish and say, well, this is where the party's going to go. So I just need to read from section to section. All right, and then from there, I then have these, which is the stat blocks that have been used in these chapters. So I added in a new card just by right click, add card. Added in there the uh, text, added in the stat block for my dirty cop, all right, which is a custom TTRPG stat block. There's another video on that if you need to know how to do that. And then I've just dragged in arrows to say, well, this stat block's going to be used in these parts of the module. And then from there, what I've done is I've just double clicked on the line and written, all right, so PCs plus two. That tells me that the dirty cop here, I actually need the number of people in our party, so let's say four, four players, let's say. Plus two, so I need six dirty cops. So I'd add six dirty cops into this module. It's the same over here, but also over here we have an uh, add initiative count 20. We have a dirty cop leader who's jumping in here and joining this fight as well. All right, so I can lay that out quite nicely. And I think that's a really cool thing to be able to do. All right, because it just tells me very visually, very quickly, this is what is going to happen in this scene. I might not even need to read all this text, right? I may have done a pre-read, but this is really cool for me to sort of just trigger, like, oh, I remember what's going to happen here. I can see the flow of it, all right? But if I need to, I can also click on it. I can come in here. I can see it, all right? And I can have a quick read and get the information that I need to continue. All right, now I've just added some pictures in here. Um, I wonder, actually, if I could do... I'm just going to try this. I have not tried this at all. We've got these images. Can you copy the image? I don't think you can. What if you do this though? Let's do a card. Pasted image. We'll just do any one. This is how you get yourself in trouble when you're doing you know, YouTube videos, guys, is you try, like you have an idea. You're like, yeah, I'm going to just see if this works. 90% of the time it doesn't. All right, so I'm just replicating here the show to players um, that I have that exist for my other pictures of my other world, right? So usually I have a picture um, with an explanation mark which renders it. And then straight underneath that I have a show to players, all right? That doesn't do the render. What it does is it actually, um, it just gives me a link that I can send to players. So in this case here, I'm just replicating that to see if it would work from here. So let's have a look. I've got a show to players. Um, can we open in a new window? Yes, we can. All right, and I can drag that off to my second screen and show my players. So that's a really cool thing, I think. Now, I'm just going to jump over here because now I'm really curious uh, into my other board. This is my standard board um, that I play like this is my D&D world. I'm just going to jump in here and I'm going to do a a new canvas, add a new card. This vault has the, um, the second window plugin installed, which is what I use natively to send images to my second screen. So really just what I want to do here is have a look. Let's just have a look here and just go show to players. I just want to know if I right click this and go open a new window, Click in it, click, no, click, then right click, open a new window. All right, fantastic. All right, 
I was just testing that just to see if it works. So I say good news there. The second window plugin by the excellent wizard Javelin does work. All right. So what that means technically is that from our uh, our board here, if you just add a link underneath your images that you want to share to your players, all right, that doesn't have the explanation mark. And then what I do here, just let's zoom in here and have a really close look at the link. All right. Oh. All right. I put a a pipe. And then I write show to players. All right. What that does is that renames that link to, to say show to players. And that becomes something because there's no exclamation mark. It's just a link. That alone is enough for me to trigger the second window plugin and send it to my uh, second screen, which is visible to my players now. Just a quick uh, word here on why I use second screen instead of the native second uh, window uh, feature that does exist inside of Obsidian now. You know, it didn't exist when second window came out. Um, if you go here, getting off track now. Oh, I'm going to have to drag that out a little bit, I think, just to give me. Here we go. All right, so if I go open a new window, all right, see how the, the size of the picture didn't change? But if I go here and go open in, oh, sorry, I'm going to have to go back to this other screen. If we go back to second window, and go open a new window which is related to the actual second window plugin. Notice if I maximize this, the actual size of the image changes. But if I use the native version, I have to get my head around where to click and where to not. Uh, open a new window. All right, see how it's much smaller. So that's one of the reasons why I use Javelin's second window um, plugin is because it's actually better for me when I'm actually displaying it to my players because it automatically maxis, maximizes that window to take up the whole area. All right, so just a big call out there. I think that's a really positive selling point um, on there. All right, so look, honestly, um, there's not much to this as you can see. Now, one of the cool things you can do is you can highlight a section here and right click and go create group. All right, so you can create a party decision in this case. Uh, you can highlight this thing and you can give it a whole color. All right, so you can group it. Um, and then, yeah, so you can drag these things around. So look, I'll be honest, it's pretty simple, right? It's very effective. It's very easy to use. It's obviously changing uh, according to the theme that we're using. All right, so if you come in here and have a look, we can just drag in Dark Moon Valley. All right, we can see we've got some pictures going on, right? Like it's it's changing according to the theme that's been used, um, but it's very easy to use. So I guess what the big question in my mind is, is this better than Excaladraw? Because Excaladraw, let's be completely honest, is doing almost the exactly same thing, or at least they're trying to, right? Like Excaladraw, it takes what this does a little bit further, in my opinion. Um, it's not as easy to use. Uh, I don't think it's as sort of clean cut. Um, it's nice looking, but at the same time, I think Excaladraw is, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. All right, so let's just have a look here. Oh, here's my journey board that I was just playing around with, just me playing with different functionality. But here's my Excaladraw journey board. Now, this is pretty much the same functionality. All right. If we come down here, um, drag Dark Moon Valley in. Oh, we do have a difference there, right? Like it's dragging a link. Um, all right, so that does link there. If I change this to preview, there we go. So you can get a similar thing in that it's showing you the rendering. The rendering of notes is definitely nowhere near as nice in its scaling draw. But I'll be honest, I don't use this functionality because I want previews of my notes in here. As you can see, what I tend to use flowcharts for, or in this case mind maps or whatever you want to call them, is I'm mapping out where my players and my parties are going. So is Excaladraw or Canvas better for that specific job? 
right now, I'm leaning towards the scallop rock. All right, I love that I can draw in different shapes in here. All right, um, we've got you know, diamonds for decisions, you've got circles, you've got your know, rectangles, right? So there's lots of different choices that you can add in here. Uh, you can draw, all right, so that's a fantastic thing. You can draw your lines. All right, and one thing I, I think I really do like uh, with Excaladraw is you're quite free with how you do this, okay? If we go back and have a look inside of here, if you want to link something, you've got the top anchor, the side anchors, and the bottom anchors, and you can lead them into other anchors. And you know, that's fine, or you can lead them into, oh, actually, does nothing work? That's a good question. All right, no, you can't lead it into anything. All right, but with Excaladraw, I can actually come here and just draw arrows if I want. I can double click in arrows and put my text in there. Uh, I can color these in pretty much any color that I want. Okay, I've got different shapes. Um, I can click on my things and I can change the type of sort of uh, arrow that we have there. So as you can see, the flexibility is a lot greater with Excaladraw. But another thing that I like is I can just simply cut and paste in images. And I'm just going to bring up just a random image here. Google Cat. Oh, All right, so we bring in a picture. You can literally just drag that in. All right, um, I'm pretty sure you can also copy and paste. All right, copy, paste. All right, so it's very easy to get images into a scala draw. Um, I like that there's no text on it. Okay, um, and can I draw from here to a picture? Yes, I can. All right, and then it does a, a link to connection. All right, now, why do I say that? All right, because one thing you'll notice here that I'm using quite a lot of is all of these different emojis. And please excuse the really friendly looking emojis. Windows 11 did some bad things to my emojis. Uh, Linux guys, stop laughing. All right, this is not your time to shine. All right, let's all, all be a little bit sad that the emojis now are completely friendly. Um, where's the dragon? Like, what is that? Like, that's not scary. There was a scary-ish dragon before. It's not scary anymore, and I'm rather upset about it. But anyways, as you can see, you can drag your emojis in. Now, if we go and have a look at um, Canvas, can we do emojis? And the answer is yes. You can go add a card. All right, and from the card, we can press Windows period, and that brings up the emojis, right? So you can have your little emoji thing. Um, you can't change the size of it. You probably could with some CSS, but that's going to be complex, right? So you can have a little icon there, and you, you know, you can use your icons to reference things. But is that as nice as this? All right, because all I have to do is double click here, press Windows period, um, and we'll bring in the uh, swords. And then from there, I can resize that. I can drag them. There's transparent backgrounds. I can put them in front of things. I can send them backwards. I believe. Nope, it's kind of working, kind of not. All right, but I guess the point being that I'm a bit more flexible here in what I can do. All right, so look, both of them are very, very similar tools. I think for me, the benefit that I like about Excaladraw is that you can sort of like you lay things out in a standard flowchart method or a standard mind map, mind map method. Um, which works really well, all right? It's not as easy to use, all right? Some of the functionality for um, uh, Excaladraw is sort of like hidden here 
into other things, all right? Like there's images and notes, but it's all sort of hidden in these menus. Um, but the power is actually definitely there, all right? You've got Canvas, all right? It's available now inside of your Obsidian. You can update it and get it to where it needs to go. Uh, but you've also got access to Excalibur. I think, honestly, where you're going to use one versus the other is largely a preference choice on maybe what you're doing, right? If you're flow charting, like I'm doing here, where you've just got um, sort of like these little card things or nodes, as I like to call them, with a small amount of text that's linking from one to the other, I think that Excalibur Draw is still the better solution, all right? Notice that I can hold my mouse over the, uh, the nodes um, to, to see what that note is. If I do something similar here, right, see I can't actually hover over the fixer there, all right, until I click into that card and activate it, and then I'm in that note effectively, and then I can do my scrolls. So it's a two click or a click and hover process where in Excalibur, it's just a hover process. I would love to see these cards, all right, where you can have a card, that just has a bit of text, maybe linked to a note. I'd like to be able to link these to a note. All right, so say this is for a town. I want to be able to click that and that go to the town. I want to be able to link that entire card to a place. And I think that would be very useful. Where right now, I agree that the functionality of what they've done is offering a lot of power because you can have multiple things linked from inside of here. I just want that simplicity, I want that quickness, I want to be able to go, this is the town, click and have it load up, maybe on the right hand pane, and I think that would be highly useful. I definitely want to see some more options, um, maybe with call out shapes, all right, card shapes, but also the arrow shapes, um, the different formats that are available, I think that would be really, really powerful. Um, and if they were doing that, I think I would probably be in a position where I would start to um, migrate everything off of Excalibur Draw and over into here. All right, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see where it happens. So I'm already watching the um, the plugin community. Uh, they're getting rather excited over this plugin, and I can see that there's new plugins starting to come out. Um, those plugins are like creating entire canvas boards off of existing note structures, right? So the links that exist between notes, it's like there's plugins out there already that will create you a canvas based on those connections effectively create you like a visual mock, right? Um, which is really, really powerful. So anyway, look guys, that has been Canvas. Um, it is so simple to use. It is so clean and easy. And I, I really do just like the way it works. Um, I guess what I'm looking for is just them to take it a step further and make it more like Visio or more like Excalibur Draw give us the ability to create proper flow charts in here. All right, and for that, I need shapes. All right, I need different shapes to represent different things. I need different sort of formats on my arrows to represent different things. And I would love to have the ability to just have a, this card is linked to this note and just click through and just have that work. I think that would be really cool. Outside of that, Canvas is already fantastic. It is a very, very useful tool. It's just a question of whether Excalibur Draw or Canvas is the better choice for maybe what you're actually planning on doing, okay? Because if you're working with notes and you wanna see notes like I've got here, Canvas is the right choice. But if you want a um, sort of a Visio experience with your, um, your nodes, then I think Excalibur Draw is the right experience, all right? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Um, I would love to see some examples of what you guys create with this. Please do post them in the socials. I'd love to see them in Facebook, in the Discord. Um, for my Patreons, like definitely, let's get these things going. If anyone can find some really cool tips and tricks on how to use these in a clever way, please do let me know. Like, let's have a look and see what you're doing. Um, but outside of that, guys, it is Christmas Day, so I hope you're not all sitting here having, uh, you know, making YouTube videos. I hope you're out there enjoying yourself with the family. Um, my family have just uh, all left, so, you know, the house is nice and quiet, finally. Um, and, yeah, I uh, enjoy yourself, all right? Enjoy yourself. 
be merry. Um, obviously, enjoy yourself uh, safely, but have a fantastic new year. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what the new year brings. All right, guys, let's leave it there. If you do enjoy this content, please do like and subscribe using the buttons below. Um, a huge and massive shout out to my patrons. Like it's been a hell of a year, guys. You have made my videos uh, so much more successful than they've ever been in all the years that I've been doing this. So a huge thank you. Like it's hard to actually express how much I appreciate it. Like it's really made it really quite special for me. So thank you. Um, enjoy yourself. Have a great year. I will speak to you on the socials and uh, that's it. Enjoy yourself. Bye.